Winnebago motors into their second straight state title game led by Division I recruit Devin Bawinkle. Second to Chicago Leo a year ago, the Indians get a Catholic League team again in 2005. Hale's Franciscan is back after a one-year hiatus looking for their second state title in the last three years. The Class A basketball season comes to a climax here tonight. It's number one Hales Franciscan taking on Winnebago for the Class A boys state championship and here for the call of tonight's ball game. Let's go to Jim Albrecht and Matt Taphorn. And thank once again Mr. Lee Hall. Of course it's a team one side thinks it can be beaten. The other team thinks it can go one better than it did last year. Hales Franciscan brings in that Chicago swagger and the number one ranking in the state. Winnebago brings a whole lot of balance, but Matt Taphorn, if you looked around here and talked to people, they'd probably say, well, it's going to be pretty tough to beat Hales, but don't tell Bago that. Well, a lot of people think this might have been Hales' third state final championship in a row had they been eligible last year. But Winnebago has something to prove here tonight, too. They came in second last year. They didn't like that taste, and they're coming away for it, hoping for a championship tonight. Well, let's see how these two got here, starting with, of course, uh, Winnebago, sectional OT win over Rockford Christian Johnson, and then held off that tough Rock Falls team. And then Winnebago, of course, took care of business in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. As far as Hales Franciscan, they only had one game that was a problem, and that was in the sectional. They've been rolling after that. Speaking of rolling, the stars are out, and you don't have to be outside to see them tonight. One star is on Winnebago. That would be Mr. Bawinkle. Yeah, Devin Bawinkle, the junior. We've talked about him throughout the broadcast. The, the junior averages about 21 points a game, had a big 27-point, 11-rebound performance in the semifinal victory. Just a great effort, does a lot of things out on the floor. And on the other side, the name rhymes with annoy, as in annoy everybody's defense. We're talking Matt Minoy. Yeah, also a first-team All-Stater, headed to Purdue, averages about 18 points a game, has been big and averaging a double-double in this state tournament. And, of course, uh, as, I, as I like to call him, uh, man-child squared, because he will take up a lot of space. Absolutely. Can Winnebago hit their shots? That's key. Can they stay out of foul trouble and get Hales Franciscan in foul trouble? All the answers are about to come up as the lights shine brightest tonight on Class A basketball in Illinois. It's Winnebago against Hales Franciscan, and here to run down the lineups of these great players is our PA announcer, Mr. Paul Herzog. Basketball fans, on behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the City of Peoria, welcome to Carver Arena in the Peoria Civic Center for America's original March Madness. This Class A championship game for Class A Boys 2005 features the Indians of Winnebago, 29 and 3, and the Chicago Hales Franciscan Spartans, 29 and 4. Before we meet the starting lineups, please stand and observe a moment of silence to reflect on our freedom and to remember the men and women in the armed forces serving us around the world. Thank you and thank them. And now please remove your caps and address the flag with your hand over your heart as our guest soloist, a senior from Belleville East High School. Laura Lorenzen leads us in our national anthem.
And now let's meet the starting lineups for this Class A championship game. For Winnebago, at a guard, a 5'10 senior. 11, Brennan Crawl. At a guard for Hales Franciscan, the 5'8 junior. 3, Jerome Randall. For the Indians at guard, a 6'2 junior, 13, Wes Reinke. For the Spartans at a forward, a 6'8 senior, 21, Jeff Wilson. At a guard for Winnebago, a 6'5 junior, 21, Devin Ballwinkle. At a forward for Hales Franciscan, a 6'7'' senior, 14, Austin Chapitol. For the Indians at forward, a 6'2'' senior, 41, Caleb Snyder. At a guard for the Spartans, a 5'10'' senior, 23, Michael Robinson. At center for Winnebago, a 6'7'' senior, 42, Sean Grissetta. And a guard for Hales Franciscan, a 6'4'' senior, 33, Nate Minoy. Coaching in his 18th year at Winnebago, a record of 351 and 148, Joe Murphy. Coaching in his sixth year at Hales Franciscan, a record of 126 and 49, Gary London. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that's been generated by March Madness in Illinois. It's America's original March Madness. Fans, please direct your attention to the arena floor and meet the officials for this game. The referee from El Dorado, Eric Brannock. From El Dorado, Roger Grumley. And from Centralia, Robert Smith. Presenting the game ball for this championship game will be Barbara Beck, manager of the Illinois Community Relations of Ameri Ameren Silco, Ameren Corporation, one of the sponsors of the March Madness experience. We all thank the Ameren Corporation. We're taking a look at two teams that both have championship game experience, but Matt for Hales Franciscan, three of those starters have championship experience from 2003, and only Mr. Bowwinkle returns from that 2004 championship game for Winnebago against Chicago Leo. Now certainly you got to think that the Winnebago experience that they've gained just being here this weekend and the two games they've already played are certainly going to help them in this game as well. What does Hales Franciscan not do well? Uh, we haven't seen too much of it. They they hit a lull occasionally, but they're a high school team. You can't stay hot all the time. Well, and that's what I was going to say. They, sometimes they tend to coast out there. They always aren't in attack mode. That's when they're at their best, both offensively and defensively, to see if they can come out and attack right from the start. And what Winnebago does so well is play together. Chapital will go right up and get it taken away. And here comes Winnebago. Well, that's what they need to do to stay in this game. Be aggressive defensively, not be intimidated. Good hands by Wes Reinke that time. Kept Chapel right in front of him, was able to come up with the ball. Crow lights it up. Brennan Crow, who's hit quite a few threes in this state final, gets Winnebago up on top early. When you watch this kid with the ball, you're going to be amazed. His name is Jerome Randall, and he'll do that all night if you let him. And Mike, Wes Reinke thought he had his hands full in the semifinal game with Joe Starnes. Randall puts it into another gear. This is Devin Bawinkle, the junior who's been recruited by just about everybody. We've got contact and a charge as Nate Minoy sets up that condo. They call it a body, but it looks like a condo. And you can see where both these schools come from. Winnebago up by the Rockford area, of course, and then right in the heart of Chicago where they get all that great competition. Hales Franciscan in that Chicago Catholic League, rated number one. Didn't make it down here last year because of some laws violations. Minoy gets rejected by Snyder. Do you believe that? I really don't. <laughs> Good job that time by Grissetta helping out, however. Crawling in! 
That's his favorite spot, that left wing. He's hit two already in the ballgame. That'll certainly loosen up the defense. Here comes the track meet. Notice Randall misses it. Bowwinkle with the board. He's got a man out front. Put it up and score. Cole's got eight quick points. Winnebago is not going to back down to this team. They're going to take their opportunities when they have them, get quick shots, and look to push the ball up the floor. Well, even if the Indians don't prevail in this game, they have sent the original message. We're here. We're to be dealt with. We know you're from Chicago, we know you're athletic, and this is Mike Robinson who is one of the most athletic guards you'll see. He can shoot from beyond the arc and he can drive to the glass like this. Brennan Kroll just allowed him too much of an angle to get to the basket that time. Not again. No. Rebound taken away by a hustling Chapital. Grissetta a little slow getting off the ground that time. Chapital was able to get up to it quicker. Manoy's going to Purdue and he's going to the hole, but it comes out of there. Kroll's open on the left wing again. Oh, they missed the pass, and Kroll saw a teammate across the lane. Now he'll force it off the glass. Not uh, a good idea. He had Reinke wide open. Now the long pass. To Robinson, count him up. The deal is this. We know that Chicago Hales Franciscan can keep this pace up, can win a big one. Well, that's very questionable. They don't go as deep into their bench with quality players off the bench as, as, might, as Hales might. That's going to be the problem. Ranky. Oh, my, they called a block on that. that. I thought that was more of a charge than the first one they called for Manoy. And M Manoy, who's going to Purdue, if you don't know already, right there, he loves to do this, and he can take the wow. bruising because he's so big, weighing 265. Tough call. <laughs> I so understand it's a lot to try to get around, <laughs> but I still thought he had pretty good position that time. It's kind of like trying to get around your garage, you know, when you got something on the other side. You got to walk around it. Ranky, who's been just fabulous during the second season, 14 points in the Super, 23 in the quarterfinal win over Bree Central, and 13 this afternoon in the win against Liberty. He makes one of two in Winnebago. Falls back on defense with that three point lead. Jerome Randall, only a junior. I got a feeling with that kind of quickness. College recruiters already know his name. Down low, Manoy, but they overshot it. Robinson wanted him to go up for the ball. At least that's he's signaling his teammate, like, jump up. When well, you had Robert Brooks in the ball game as a substitute that time for Caleb Snyder, tried to front Manoy instead of playing behind him as Snyder was, and the pass was a little too high. Brooks wearing number 53. He'll mix it up inside as Renke. Works against the long arm Chapital. Brooks won't take that shot. No, but I thought Manoy got it through another charge that time. Just didn't get the call. Bawinkle saw somebody cutting along the baseline. That somebody was Renke, but the defense stepped in the passing lane. We're early. It's a state championship night, and it's a good one. We're back after these local messages. These two teams sizing each other up on the court now. Let's see how they stack up as far as where they come from. Chicago, a lot of talent to draw from. Winnebago, of course, a slightly smaller population, but the enrollments actually show Winnebago with the edge there. Chicago Catholic League, Big Northern, are the conferences represented in this Class A state championship game. I'm Jim Albrecht, he's Matt Taphorn, and Lee Hall is Roman, the Civic Center here. Out front, it's Renke. Manoy does not miss there. No, and he's going to go up strong against Reinke trying to block that, and that's a mismatch from the start. So we're down to a one-point game, an early bolt of three-point lightning by Winnebago. And, of course, they've seen so much great competition. This is Randall, but he can't control in that Chicago Catholic League. I mean, some of the teams they have lost to are rated very high in double A. Absolutely, you got Thornton that was run, number one team in the country at one time, USA Today. Westinghouse, number one team. They got beat by twice in the state. In there's, double A. There's Joe Murphy. Great guy, 18 years as head coach. Devin Bawinkle. Well, look who's there. Craig Nelson gets the roll. I tell you, every time he comes in the game, he does something. I tell you, Bob Winkle is really going to have his hands full against Mike Robinson. He's one of the best defenders that we've seen down here in this state tournament, and he's going to give Bob Winkle all he can handle. 
More than halfway through the first quarter. That monster of a young man is Nate Manoy. You see right there, turn and Boy, get what the a tough soft shot that was. Woo. Ball was thrown over his head, over the top. He just corralled it, and that nice little jump hook from the baseline. Tough shot. He hit 34 once this year. He averages 18. As Ranky loses the handle and out of there with it, comes Wilson. Wilson with the pass. Oh, that, they get it back to Robinson. Nicely done. And even though a little chaotic on the break, they managed to catch up with the basketball, and now they've caught Winnebago and taken the lead by one. Wilson's got such quick hands for a 6'8 guy out on the perimeter and comes up with a lot of steals because of that. And Robinson has no ball handling responsibilities, so when the, they get the ball, he runs down the floor and allows Randall to bring the ball down the floor. Exactly. Snyder cannot get away from Wilson, who said, not in my neighborhood. Chapinol, look out! This Mr. is Hale's, Hale's game to a T. Just get the ball and go. And certainly Winnebago cannot get into a track meet with them. They just don't have the, the depth that uh, Hales would have on, from the bench. Mr. Rim, we want to introduce you to Austin Chapinol. He may be visiting again later this evening. Biggest lead of the night for Fran Siskin at three. Well, Brooks never takes that shot. At least he hasn't down here, and they break out again. Manoy with numbers. Alley oop. Well, Chapinol almost got another one, but they maintain possession. Three by Robinson. No, and Mr. Bowwinkle gathers it in. Really surprised it wasn't a technical call there against Chapinol. Hanging on the rim, there wasn't anybody beneath him. Bowwinkle in and out. They needed that and couldn't get it. With that quick release, Bowwinkle usually. Well, at least 50% of the time buries those. Chapel walked out front. Oh, boy. Evan McCrimmon will check in for Hales Franciscan. And Nate Manoy will take a rest. It's Snyder, Brooks, Nelson, Kroll, and the man with the basketball. Both Grissetta and Reinke are on the bench, two of their better offensive threats and, and right now they may have to look to Kroll to step up where he left off before he went out of the ball game. I asked Joe Murphy what his team did. Kroll down the middle. See those quick hands? Taking it away was Chapital. As Kroll went up, he didn't have the mail with it. I asked Joe what they did between games because they played that second semifinal game this afternoon. Not a lot of time to rest or recuperate. Said we went to the same buffet we've been down to for the past three days. Ate like pigs. Then went <laughs> Went back to the hotel, watched tapes of the afternoon games. Kids love hearing the announcers, us, talk about them. And we're back. Seems like a couple of minutes, and now a foul on the way in. Jeff Wilson, who's really come along this season. Well, and he really adds a dimension to this team that they need, having a guy like Nate Minoy just to give him some space inside and not have, rely on him totally to provide them an inside offense. Wilson's really given them some of that this year. Randall can hit that. He had Nelson in his face. It did not matter. Jerome Randall who's being looked at by Illinois, Michigan State, Florida, and Loyola. Tells you why with that all around game. Very courteous there of Mr. Robinson to bring the ball over like that. And well, he didn't bring it to the official that made the call. You did notice that. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there was that a message along it. with Absolutely. the courtesy. Hales Franciscan with that 18 game winning streak. And there you see Gary London. He knows what it feels like to hoist the big one. He did it in 2003, winning the state championship against Mount Carroll in a a hotly contested game. Went right down to the last 30 seconds. Craig Nelson will have to be careful against Jerome Randall. Does a nice job. Kroll really needs that one. Where would they be without Brennan Kroll right now? That's a trio of threes from him. He certainly kept them in the ball game. He's got 11 out of the 14 points for Winnebago here. And Ballwinkle has yet to hit a shot from the field. We all know how a hot hand from beyond the arc can change things in a high school game. And Mr. Kroll's kind of proving that point. Chapital shut off nicely by Bowwinkle. And they're waiting anyway for the time to 
come down to the final Hales Franciscan shot of the first eight minutes of play in the 2005 state championship. Here we go. Randall will try to penetrate or will pull up and hit a 16 footer. Good it's block. blocked. It's blocked by Nelson. They get it back. That's blocked. And coming out of there with it is Bowwinkle. Well, good defense on the other end as Shannon Yerger couldn't get the basket after the block. So two blocks at the end of the quarter. And we got a good one. Hales by three. Winnebago's got some sweet three music going right now, but uh, the real statistic right now, Matt, is in the paint. They have got 17 points for Hales Franciscan. 14 of those 17 have come in the paint, as you said. The only other three was from Randall from the perimeter. Let's go to Lee Hall. Lee? Guys, we were in the uh, Hales Franciscan huddle. Gary London wants to go full green. I'm assuming that's full court pressure after a made basket. He wants to turn up the heat a little bit here. And <laughs> obviously, they want to clamp down on number 11. <laughs> so they'll be paying extra attention to Mr. Crawl, guys. Well, the clamping process took place while you were talking, Lee, because they forced him into a five-second call trying to get the basketball in. So Hales will have a chance to extend that three-point lead as Manoy wants the ball up top. It's not exactly the way you'd like to start the second half, getting a five-second call on the sideline. McCrimmon drives, and he will be fouled. No, exactly. Also in the ball game for Hales Franciscan is Darius Melcher. And you'll see the proceedings there along the baseline. Takes it strong inside against Grissetta. Grissetta, we saw earlier in the game against uh, Justin Brook, or Brock, excuse me, yep. did a good job of laying off and not picking up fouls. That time a little too aggressive on the shot. As a team, the Spartans of Hales Franciscan shoot about 67% from the line as compared to 65% for Winnebago. Suffice it to say, you got to stay hot and not give them second chance opportunities if you are Winnebago. You got to, you got to avoid the scoring drop. Got to. They really need to get Ballwinkle involved in the offense as well. You know, he just isn't getting a lot of room with Robinson in the ball game. Robinson's actually on the bench right now, so see if we try to get Ballwinkle involved somehow. Well, of course, Hales Franciscan plays at the speed of a NASCAR pit crew. And now they've forced two straight turnovers. And Reinke's really struggling with the ball as well. He's getting a lot of pressure on him. Chapitals just in his shorts everywhere he goes. So that's a tough matchup for Reinke. And Randall's getting a rest right now. Out front, it is Melcher. Shannon Yerger wears number 15. Manoy. He'll just pivot all night until he sees what he likes. <laughs> Schneider's got his work cut out for him trying to get around Manoy down on the block. 265, that's right. Oh, a reach in foul by Renke. Joe Murphy told his Winnebago Indians, guys, I know this sounds trite, but go out and have some fun, okay? I mean, we, we've done everything we can do up to this point. We got a few X's and O's to talk about, but please go out and just have fun. Do the best you can. Long jumper corner. Oh, oh that's money. Darius Melcher. What a tough shot that was. He had Grissetta flying at him, the 6'7 Grissetta inside. Must have just missed that shot. Melcher was able to knock it down. You can see the problems they're having getting inside. They cannot penetrate. And whereas Ranky was having a heyday finding penetration areas in these first two games at State, he's getting a lot of people coming from behind him, poking, getting those and, arms and in you there. you see some frustration on his face out there you didn't see in the first two games. He was really cool in the first couple of games, didn't really let the pressure bother him. Now he's getting a little frustrated out there. Manoy gets called for the personal on that one as Bob Winkle. And that, that's notable at this point. He looks to Coach Gary London over there and says, I'm okay. Don't worry about it. There's no way I'll pick up my third, but you just never know. There's a lot of situations that you can't control. Oh, they got a little miscommunication down there. Grissetta goes up and gets it like anyway. Like that one right there. Nate Manoy almost picked up his third foul. Baseball pass time. Wilson can't finish, but he'll go to the free throw line. I tell you, that's one thing that Nate Manoy does so well. He is adept at that long pass. Well, he always keeps his head up with the ball when he pulls it out of the out of the net one end. See Wilson goes up strong. First he sees uh, Grissetta there coming off his left shoulder. Didn't realize that, that Snyder was there as well. 
Five point lead. Stays that way. And I'm sure those former Bago Indians are watching with a lot of interest. And he misses them both. And coming out of there with it is Grissetta. We're talking about Bobby Tisdale, Chad Nelson, David Merchant, and Ben Powers. What a team that was. They were really something. Here's Ranky. That's what he wants to do, and he draws a foul. And again, one of the keys for Winnebago to stay tight with this very talented Hales Franciscan team is to put up some digits on that foul part of the scoreboard. Well, the only way you can do that is continue to attack the basket. Ranky's done that, sometimes with not as much success, but he's been to the foul line. This will be his third and fourth trips already in this ballgame. I don't have to tell you how important free throws are even now, do I? <laughs> no, I, you know, it's certainly that's a staple in the ball game, but Reinke is a guy that's got a better stroke than what he's shown at the free throw line in this tournament. Makes one of two. And with 6.20 remaining here in the first half, the Bago fans. There's the future point guard at Purdue Boilermakers <laughs> right there bringing the ball down the floor. That's what he says he's going to be, but uh, we'll see. What Mr. Painter says, oh, Michael Robinson put that in the photo album. And how many times have we seen Hales just attack the basket off the dribble and get all the way without anybody stopping him, either taking a charge or bothering the shot? Ranky trying to take on Manoy. Not an easy task. And Kroll does a little Harlem Globetrotter imitation out front. All over him is Melcher. There's Ranky. This is going to be trouble, but he dishes it off, and they couldn't finish. But Ballwinkle will try to hit that. No way. Back up. Brissetta, no whistle. Ballwinkle got fouled. I wonder if they called it on the shot or after the shot. It looked like it was during the shot. We'll give him two. There you see Gary London looking very, very dapper tonight, along with his coaching staff. Hales Franciscan, of course, lost a championship game to Staunton by four, but... Defeated Mount Carroll in the in the comeback that almost was. <laughs> Mount Carroll got so far behind early in that game, they exerted every ounce of pressure and energy they could to come back, and Hales just denied him in the final minute. That was those first two points of the ball game coming from the free throw line. He's got six rebounds in the ball game so far. Which could be a good omen if you're only trailing this team, Hales Franciscan, by four, and you're your money man, Devin Bawinkle, only has two points. Mike Robinson, he's just so strong. That's a guy they need to try to figure out a way to stop. That's 10 points in the game right now for Robinson. They just don't have an answer for him. And Robinson, who scored just five this afternoon, shows you how he uses that body and the hang time. Very strong inside. You know, Robinson only stands about 5'10". But he's very quick, strong, gets up off the floor very well, and plays a lot bigger than that 5'10 size. As you can see right there, blocking the shot against Ballwinkle at 6'5. And Ballwinkle's not used to getting his shot blocked, folks, because he has a very quick release and leans back a little bit when he goes vertical. Five minutes remaining in the half. Mr. Robinson, not this time. Good positioning by Grissetta. And you got to work hard against Wilson. But there's the steal at the other end. Up and in for Darius Melcher. Well, just when you worked hard to get the bound, you give it up on the turnover. And now this is crucial and time for Winnebago. Ball here. They got to get this ball up in a hurry. And Nelson does the honors. But he's going to be pinched, breaks it, gets through. Somebody should be open. That would be Ballwinkle. Really got a hit. Big shot there. Down nine, cut it to six. Looks like this game was starting to slip away here in the first half. Jerome Randall's in the game, and I only tell you that, folks, so you don't go get a beverage or anything, because this guy. I'm not sure I'd blink he, if you yeah. might miss something. He's got like blink this. speed. You might just miss his next slashing maneuver. Melcher's really being aggressive in there. And that's what you really love about Hales Franciscan. You know, you got McCrimmon and Melcher. They come off the bench, and they're not just going to go into a lull out there and stand around. They attack, too. The nature of the Spartans' beast is their offense, believe me. I mean, if you told them, hey, you're going you're gonna to win tonight either 90 to 88, 
or I, I can promise you a win like 39-38. They'll go, give me the 90, please. <laughs> Wait. Absolutely. I want to have some fun, man. Still a six-point game. A nice feed inside and a foul inside. That'll go against Evan McCrimmon. There you see the young man, number 25. And, of course, the buzz is, you know, that maybe this Hales Franciscan team is so good and so talented if they had not gotten sanctioned last year, they may be going for their third in a row. They're up by six. We're back after these local messages. Earlier today, over at the March Madness Experience, another Illinois basketball champion was crowned. The second annual IHSA Wheelchair Basketball State Tournament was held. Five teams from around the state competed. This tournament is the only one in the entire nation sanctioned by a state high school association. This year's winner, the Alton Confluence Center Coast. Congratulations to the entire team on a job well done. The wheelchair tournament is another example of the trailblazer established by the Illinois High School Association. You ever played wheelchair basketball? I have not. It is a bear, man. These guys are good. I've, I've watched people do it and seen them struggle. I'm not sure I want to be a part of that. Whole different level. Inbound to Grissetta. Perfect play, but he fights, gets it back. Can't get it to fall, and this time Wilson says enough. Grissetta looks like he's hesitating a little bit out there, always looking around to see mm -hmm. where Wilson is or, or somebody else that might bother his shot. Oh, Mr. Randall doesn't finish it off. He brought some oohs and ahs, and Ranky now comes the other way. It's a six-point ball game, as you can see on the left corner of your screen. That's a tough shot for Snyder. Oh, this is going to be easy for Devin Ballwinkle. It wasn't that easy. Jeff Wilson was standing there at 6 8 above the rim waiting for him. It's a good basket that time by Ballwinkle to get it there and get it up over the outstretched hand of Wilson. Well, let's just say for Ballwinkle, he makes it look easy. Absolutely. For other people, they might hesitate. 28 24, hanging tough is Winnebago. Robinson will hang. Not this time. Ball is fought for. Going back up with it is McCrimmon. And he'll go to the line. It's Bowwinkle's second foul. I really thought that uh, as Robinson drove in the paint, that he's really lowering that shoulder and, and backing off Bowwinkle to free up, free himself up. And that, that's going to get called eventually is, is if Bowwinkle just stays in front of him. And no move from the Winnebago bench, Joe Murphy who's won 351 games in 18 years. Knows his super junior. Now he's in a little foul trouble. McCrimmon, no. Two for seven from the line now for Hales. Just not very effective there in this first half. Bowenko has two fouls now. Kind of keep an eye on him there. If he picks up a third, could be very crucial yeah. for the Indians. He's got to go 306 without number three on his back. Back to a five-point Hales Franciscan lead as Craig Nelson brings it up. There's contact, and we're going to have a foul on Jerome Randall. Somebody actually fouled Brooks instead of the other way around. Yeah, well, Brooks was set up for a pick <laughs> on the on the free throw line, and let's see what kind of free throw shooter he is. Doesn't take a lot. 23 made, 37 missed during the course of the season. I couldn't even grow a goatee. Not even in college, much less high school. How do these guys do this? Uh, they need those free throws. They don't get it. So Hales Franciscan trying to spread things before the break. In a hurry is Melcher. No. Follow no. Way up there was McCrimmon. Here comes Devin Bawinkle. Looks to the wing. 13 is not there. And his ranky couldn't get it. Oh, boy, this is nothing but trouble, at least as far as Winnebago was concerned. And Randall, that, that may be about as out of control as he gets. And even then, he drew the foul. Well, on the previous time down the floor, Darius Melcher goes down the lane out of control. I just don't think they're really running much of a set offense right now. It, feels, it seems like they're just saying, OK, whoever gets the ball on the perimeter, drive it as hard as you can to the, to the basket. Either we'll score or go to the line. Well, Ranky. Would like to have that shot attempt back. He could have cut it to three. And again, the free throw line, not a pleasant place for the Spartans.
They ran over Lyle Sr. in the Supers by 21. Held off Nashville 65-57 in the quarters in the semis. Took care of Seneca 54-36. And we've got another turnover, it looks like. Just some really poor turnovers in this game for Winnebago. That one right on the baseline. Instead of running the baseline, Bowwinkle just throws it past the extended reach of Reinke. Reinke really doesn't go after with two hands. Just kind of a lazy play that time. Unforced errors will not bode well if you're playing Hales Franciscan. And this time they get a little luck. And a block from behind by Grossetta as Wilson went up for what he hoped might be a slam. Bowwinkle's got the eye, got the touch. Tough shot there, and Melcher came up to guard him, and Melcher is only a 5'8". He couldn't get up high enough, and Mike Robinson is sitting on the bench. As we're seeing Devin Bowen could get into the flow of the ball game, he's got 10 points now. 21 of Bego's points have come from the outside. Hales is living inside. Bowen with a double-double. He's got 11 rebounds to go along with those 10 points. And we've got traveling. Darius Melcher, so quick, his feet Weren't aware of the timing, apparently. These guys are quick. Devin Bowwinkle, the All-Stater, has about 12 schools looking at him, including Iowa, Michigan State. The list goes on. Georgetown, Notre Dame, another foul out front. This could be a one-point game. And if, if Winnebago gets to the break close, they've done the first part of the puzzle. Stay close. Because that, that I tell doesn't you, get him half a trophy, though. <laughs> it does not, because what happens, Matt, is that, you know, if, if Hales Franciscan gets that one four-minute run, we've seen it. 20 points are on the board. And it's hard to make up a fast 20 like that. Ooh, Bawinkle missed the second one. So it's a two-point game, under two minutes remaining. Hope you're enjoying the Class A state championship. Full house here at the Peoria Civic Center. The house that Lee Hall built, of course. Well, I okay. Go that far. Okay, he brought a brick. Okay, <laughs> that's close enough. <laughs> Wilson faces up, now spins, goes to the glass, and that time Grissetta couldn't stop the big guy. Good quick move that time by Wilson. Crawls Grisetta open. couldn't stop him because he didn't know which way he was going. Oh, they missed a gimme. Missed a gimme, and again, that size and intimidation changes the way you go up. So instead of a two point game, Hales could spread it out a little further. I'm not so sure if I was Winnebago, I wouldn't let him just spread it out and let him play for one shot. There's a pass that goes down low, gets away from Wilson, and they may have the opportunity here if they can get it up court, and a foul on Melcher really? for Hales Francis. Just a bad foul in that situation. You foul a guy 75 feet away from the basket, and they're a bonus or a double bonus opportunity. It is a one and one bonus. But uh, Melcher's made some costly mistakes here in this first half. There's those state titles in the Winnebago program. One's missing. Boys basketball, but they're pretty darn close to it. They have to find a way to take out Hales Franciscan. Brennan Kroll. You want him at the free throw line. He buries about 80% of his tries, so it's a three-point ball game. And I agree with you. I'd, I'd let him go the rest of the 58 seconds and hold if they so desire. Got I don't know the second if, one. I don't know if it's in Hales to hold the ball <laughs> that long, though. You know, Mike Robinson, the reason he is on the bench, he does have two fouls leading the charge with 11 points for Hales, but you can see that there's they're just a different team without him on the floor, both offensively and defensively. He does such a great job defensively against Ballwinkle, and offensively just adds another dim dimension, another weapon out there. Randall up, no, rebound. It's going to be contested by everyone. Hales Franciscan saves it out to Chapital, who buries the three. Big, big play. Huge three that time by Chapital. Look it, out. Winnebago thought they had to stop. I don't know if Ballwinkle wanted to do that, but uh, he was not, a be, not to be stopped. He found his fourth gear and with a five-point deficit and 33 seconds remaining. Boy, Chapital, that was that was great action underneath the basket. Some people wanted traveling call, but look out. Ooh. He was out of bounds yeah. when he hit the ball. Chapital was coming up from behind. When they double team you, you better make up your mind in a hurry. Well, and you can't continue to dribble out of that nope. double team. You got to pick the ball up, be strong with it, find the open man, and get to the basket. They're going to get Snyder out right now. 
Caleb Snyder comes out and Brooks comes in. And remember, these final 30 seconds are important for obviously the spread on the scoreboard, but for Mr. Bowwinkle not to pick up his third. They're going to run the alley out. It doesn't work. They targeted Ranky, but if you want to alley oop against Hales, you better go up on the second deck. Yeah, just too many silly turnovers in the first half against Winnebago. They're making passes that aren't there. Chapital at 6-7 can play out in the point. Randall going to do a little dance. And now Mr. Melcher doesn't get it. Rebound Brooks, and he'll just hang on. And that's oh. the way. Ooh, they almost made a dangerous mistake there because if they throw that away underneath Hale's basket, look out. Well, Hales Franciscan puts up 35. Winnebago puts up 30 through the first 16. And we'll just have to see how Winnebago holds up. I mean, they're going to be a tired group going into that locker room. Matt. Okay, Lee Hall has Gary London standing by. All right, Jim, thanks a lot, Coach. We listened into the huddle, and you wanted to uh, you wanted to go a little bit more pressure and try and get some turnovers, and, and you got some, maybe not as much as you'd like, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure, not as much as we'd like at this point in the game. Uh, we're battling a little bit of foul trouble, but, you know, we've got a deep enough bench, and we've got some guys in there that kind of got us through the first half, so uh, we didn't want anybody getting into foul trouble. So hopefully we bring those guys back in the third quarter and we can pick up the intensity. You finally found a way to get Brennan Crawl reined in after that, uh, what, 11 <laughs> Point salvo there in the opening minutes. Yeah, well, at the rate he's going, he's going to have 44 points after that first <laughs> quarter. So we definitely, he caught our attention. All right, Coach, good luck to you second. Man. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Jim, back to you. Thanks, Lee. This IHSA basketball broadcast on championship night is brought to you. It's hardware time in Peoria as we get ready to present the third and fourth place trophies in the Class A state tournament. And here to do that is Mr. Paul Herzog. At this time, let's meet the Eagles of Liberty. 2005, fourth place, Class A. A final record of 30 and four. First meet the superintendent of Liberty, Kurt Simonson. Principal, Janice Taylor. Athletic director, Mark Brassfield. Head coach, Jeff Caspery. Assistant coach, Mike Fessler. And for the Eagles, three, Joe Starnes. Four, Justin Carl. Five, Wade Hellman. Number 11, Gavin Huber. Number 12, Chris Starnes. 13, Justin Obert. 14, Ty Meyer. 15, Andrew Mast. 20, Andy Seals. 21, Josh Buckham. 22, Travis Knuffman. 23, Kyle Terstrip. 24, Brian Shulian. 25, Richard Markey. 30, Justin Brock. Injured for the season, Ben and Nyson. Manager, Jacob Cramsey. And manager Corey Stevens. The Liberty High School Eagles, fourth place, Class A, 2005. At this time, 
Please meet the Fighting Irish of Seneca, finishing third place, a record of 32 and two. Their superintendent, Rodney Engstrom. Athletic director, Steve Haynes. Head coach, Doug Evans. Assistant coach, Jeff Stenzel. Assistant coach, Shane Traeger. And assistant coach, Brad Tomhey. Manager, Aaron McKnight. Manager, Ju Hung Lee. And the Fighting Irish, number 12, Ryan Kaufman. Fifteen, Tyler Smith. Twenty, Luke Anderson. Twenty-one, Travis Meisner. Twenty-two, Alex Spicer. Twenty-three, Marty Hetley. Twenty-four, Tim Shemansky. Twenty-five, Griffin Callahan. Number 30, Seth Hobbs. Thirty-one, Dustin Shelton. Thirty-three, Garrett Callahan. Thirty-four, Robert Rexrode. Number 44, Nathan Hogue. Number 52, Brett Anderson. And the trainer, Emily Smolich. Congratulations, Fighting Irish of Seneca, third place, 2004. And now will Coach Caspery and the Captains of Liberty step forward to receive the fourth place trophy. <laughs> and now will Coach Evans and the Captains of Seneca step forth and receive the third place trophy. Reminder to Liberty fans, the reception will be at 4 o'clock in the gymnasium on Sunday. That's tomorrow. Reception for Two trophies have been handed out. Two more yet to be decided. We're back after these local messages. Welcome back to the Peoria Civic Center, Carver Arena. Of course, uh, Seneca and Liberty leaving the court now. All the pictures taken, all the memories captured of the third and fourth place trophy presentation. We've still got that big boy to hand out tonight. Chicago Hales Franciscan certainly capable, Matt, of taking home their second in three years. They're just so talented and so quick. Now when they put it in overdrive, too, they're just a different team out there, and we've seen that all weekend. They just put it at, at a different level than the rest of the teams that are down here. Winnebago's been able to stay with them for the most part because they've shot very well from three-point range and they've rebounded the ball well, but they need to keep away from those silly turnovers and they need to keep Hales out of the paint. They're just destroying them inside. Let's take a look at how it went in the first half as far as Winnebago and Hales Franciscan. Hales with that 50% shooting. Right, and Winnebago shooting about 
free throw line a telling story as well. Hale, Hale's only shooting four out of ten. Three point shots, both teams about 50%. You see the rebounding advantage again by Winnebago. Hales with a few more assists. Seven turnovers in the first half of Winnebago. Both teams about even on points off turnovers, but that points in the paint is certainly a key stat. Man. 22 to 6 for Hales, really getting inside and getting the job done. Let's take a look at the leading scorers right now. Kroll hit 11 of those 13 right off, right off the buzzer. They had three threes early on. Bawinkle came to life in the second period when Robinson went to the bench with two fouls. Robinson also led the way in scoring in the first half for Hales with 11. Randall with six. Two were tied with five, including Nate Minoy, who also picked up two fouls there in the first half as well. What did Joe Murphy have to say to Winnebago at the half? Let's find out with Lee Hall. All right, we were with Coach Murphy. Uh, boy, Crawl got off to a great start for you. He sure did. Uh, we needed that lift. Uh, we need something in the second half now, too, out of somebody. What uh, What else did you tell the boys there at halftime? We told them just to stay patient and keep working hard. Uh, the goal is to hang in the game and just, you know, win on the last second shot if that's what it takes. All right, Coach, good luck to you second half. Thank you very much. All right, Coach Murphy's already got his uh, Irish on there. We're in his St. Paddy's Day tie a few days early. Back after this. Uh, after these local messages, rather. Lots of points in the first half, 65. We're going to take a look at a few right now. Yeah, Chapel early on had this big dunk to get him started. And again, that's out of transition. Kroll had a nice shot inside the paint. But Nate Manoy, as we talked about, always keeping his head up. That was Kroll's man down the floor. And Mike Robinson, two of his 11 points. Kroll got off to a quick start, hit a couple big threes in the first period. He had 11 in the first half as well. And Baumwinkel also does a great job of keeping his head up, hitting the streaking crawl down the court for two of his 11. Jeff Wilson, a nice spin move in the paint. Again, two out of their 22 points in the paint for the first half. And Baumwinkel, very versatile, has that three-point shot, two of his, or three of his 11 points in the first half. Who will be the state champion? We're about to find out. Back after these messages on the IHSA Television Network. Hales Franciscan will inbound, and everybody's back in their seats at the Peoria Civic Center. Jim Albrecht along with Matt Taphorn. Can Winnebago get inside at all, or will their outside shooting hold up? Winnebago needs somebody else to step up. Kroll had a big first quarter. Then Bowenko took over. Reinke is yet to show up. Look at that pass from Robinson to Minoy. Good slip screen that time by Minoy. He's so effective in that paint area. You can see the two guys that were sitting on the bench with two fouls in the, the end of the first half, both Robinson and Minoy really connected on that basket. Austin Chapital uh, picked up the personal, and Mr. London, the head coach, not too happy about that. He yelled, what were we just talking about? Apparently something about how to handle Bawinkle. Ranky. He's got his work cut out tonight. You can see the ball handling skills of Bawinkle, but Chapital contending them anyway. Ranky, nice bounce pass, but it was too hard. Snyder could have caught it and scored easily off the glass, and you got to convert those. Seven-point lead. It could be 10. Robinson makes it that. There's Robinson back in the ballgame. He's got 14. Sat down in the first half with those two fouls. And they'll just dog you all the way up and down the floor. They've got the speed, they've got the reach, they've got the pitching ability. And you've got to score when you get the chance like that. And Grissetta does. Good Sean Grissetta. Better job that time by Wes Reinke. Passing the open guy instead of forcing one up off the glass. Robinson liked the last one. He doesn't like this one. Reinke quickly. You don't want to stay in the backcourt too long with these guys. It was five at the intermission. Bob Winkles trying to make it five again. Too much iron. Rebound Snyder. Uh, one more try. Now it's five. Good awareness again by Snyder. Does the little things, gets the offensive rebound, kicks it back out to Bob Winkle and knocks down the big shot with the second attempt. Looks like he's still got his legs after uh, three games in about 26 hours, doesn't it? This is Robinson's shot. He he will jet to that basket, go under the hoop, and just scoop it around like that. He's done it twice tonight already. Oh, that's a dangerous pass because Chapital wants rim, and he gets fouled. And that's three that's on Bowinkle. That's three Bowinkle on Bowinkle, and that's a drastic turn of events for Bego because there's still a lot of ball left to play. 
you, don't want, you don't want him to get timid. Yeah, Chapital's got such great anticipation on the defensive end and really gets out there with those long arms and tries to intercept that pass. There's the future champions, the seventh and eighth grade champions. Paris Crestwood, 8A, 8AA Bloomington Junior High School, Cahokia Worth, 7AA and 7A. I saw the that Bloomington. Lincoln. I saw that Bloomington team play. They could uh, they could play with a lot of high school teams. They really? Were, they were big and they were quick. Austin Chapital, the senior. The only junior in the starting five is Jerome Randall. He makes good of half of his opportunity at the line, and it's an eight-point game again. And what really bothers you about three fouls on Bowwinkle, how will it cut down his aggressive offense? When he's driving, he's got to avoid that charge. And Manoy loves setting up for the charge. Bowwinkle again! <laughs> he's feeling it from three-point range. That's going to keep help keep his team in this ball game. They need to find an answer for Mike Robinson on the defensive end. Randall will draw contact. And I don't know how well Mr. Renke sleeps at night, but he will be sleeping after this day's action. He's had a couple of tough defensive assignments. He certainly has with Joe Starnes and now against Jerome Randall, two of the quicker guards that you might see in the state of Illinois. And uh, again, Illinois, according to uh, the head coach for Hales Franciscan, has inquired about Mr. Randall. Well, I guess, you know, if you got somewhere near D. Brown speed, I don't know uh, who would win that foot race, but uh, on this playing surface, he certainly looks like he's got D. Brown speed, that's for sure. And he's got good accuracy from the free throw line, 80% on the year, so. That's one guy who might actually make D. Brown look tall. <laughs> that's true. Ranky finds an opening, gets it down low. Snyder gets rejected. Grissetta gets it back, goes up, hits it. A little more confident shot that time by Grissetta going up inside. Nice soft touch around the rim. Snyder had a productive afternoon in the quarterfinals, or I should say the semifinals, with nine points and ten rebounds. Look out, Robinson wants the other side of the glass now. Okay, if you shut him off on one side, he'll just take the early exit. Yeah, Kroll's not stopping him on the penetration. Nobody's coming over to help out. They're both looking at each other like, whose fault is it? And a turnover up top. Chapital gets it over to Robinson. That's easy. And suddenly, the Blitzkrieg is upon Winnebago. They're Robinson, down by nine. Robinson with 20 points in the ball game, nine here in the second half, just th not even three and a half minutes into the second half. I mean, that's how good they are. They've got Manoy, who could pretty much take over a game if he wanted to, but he doesn't have to. And now it's dangerous time. Ranky, that's an off-balance shot. Rebound, Snyder doesn't want to go up with it. Now he does and gets it. Well, I'm not sure how he got that one in the basket. Seemed like he threw it up there two-handed even. <laughs> Interestingly, though, Hales in the second half has put Chapital on Bowwinkle instead of Mike Robinson. You could tell exactly what Robinson was going to do. Kroll was overplaying him toward the sideline. Nobody helped out on defense, and Robinson is on some kind of role in the state championship game. And of course, he's played in one before, as we told you. Well, Kroll is just giving him too much of an angle. you got to play yeah. him more straight up and not allow him a, a, an angle to the basket to start. It. There's a nice move by Reiki. We've seen that a lot. And there's a bad pass. So Hales Franciscan with an unforced air, and it's a seven-point game as we get two new Indians checking in. Nelson and Brooks will be in when we come back. We're back after these local messages. Don't go anywhere. When Mike Robinson was last on the championship floor here in Peoria, he scored 12 points. Didn't have a bad night, but tonight, he's having the night of his championship life. He's just overpowering and overmatching his defenders. Well, and I, and I remember him two years ago, he was very impressed with him as a sophomore, thinking, man, this kid is, along with, along, excuse me, along with Manoy, is gonna be a tough tandem, and we're certainly seeing that out of him tonight. Winnipego, whoa, here's a hustling play. Let's see if uh, Randall's okay. I think he hit his head right below us. Hit his head right on the, the board. There you see him. He was diving for the pass, and hopefully he didn't gash anything. 
Gary London over his blurry fast point guard as a hush comes over the crowd here, but he's going to be okay. See, that's why you wear those headbands, man. <laughs> You gotta get some pressure, man. It's like it's like an airbag in a car, man. It's the only thing that slowed him down this weekend. Yeah, that's about right, too. A wall. <laughs> He's unbelievable. Jerome Randall will take a seat as Darius Melcher gives his teammate a little bit of a rest to shake off the collision with the immovable object. 340 remaining, third quarter. Hales up by seven. They led by five at the break. If you're just joining us, oh, there's a turnover, but they get it right back, and they throw it away again. Wow. See, they're, this is what Hales Franciscan does. They're so quick, you start thinking a little too quick. Instead of doing what you normally do, you try to overcompensate for what you think might happen. Because many times it does, <laughs> if that makes <laughs> any sense. In some form or another, absolutely. Yeah. Robinson spots up. He is something. Wow. Mike Robinson. Six out of seven in the second half just for Robinson alone. He's got 14 of the 19 points in the second half for Hales. Bowwinkle, now that's an awful tough shot to nail, but he does it anyway. And he's doing that against the 6-7 Chapital out there on the perimeter. And Nelson might have scraped Chapital in the eye as he tried to create the turnover. And Austin shaking it off. Bowenkel now with nine points here in the second half. Three out of four, all from three-point range. Game high 20 points for Winnebago. Can Winnebago make a run? That's what everybody in this place is wondering. Well, they need to find a way to control Mr. Mike Robinson yeah. in order to get that done. There's a tip pass, but Benoit quickly out to get it. He has been quiet, but he doesn't have to be with moves like that, although he got too much glass on the play. And Bowenko looks up court, curls there, got it. Curl does get it down the floor extremely well in transition. And Bowenko again recognized him with the pass. There's Minoy. You see, you see why he's so good. You see why he's going to Purdue. A lot of people would have never got to the bucket because there was a hand down there on the ball. He's so strong, he just powered it right through. Well, and I'm sure people in the Peoria area reminds you a lot of Sergio McLean, not just from a size standpoint, but just, you know, the fact that he's you know, low to the ground, very effective in around the basket, similar to what McLean was at Illinois. So Manoy, sensing his team was in a bit of a momentum swing, nails three, and ho oh, oh, Bahwinkle does not pick up the charge as Winnebago. The entire town collectively lets out a sigh. That foul will go against Hales Franciscan. It's Chapital, he's done such a good job against Bowwinkle here in the second half. Bowwinkle again has hit three threes, but he's had a guy right in his face the oh. entire time. He's a gamer, only a junior. Even Notre Dame's looking at Bowwinkle as Ranky looks at the hole. It nails a tough jumper from 16. Have to see if that helps out Ranky's confidence a little bit. Struggled the first half. He's got four points now here in the second half. Hales always has an answer, not this time, and it's headed out of bounds. So with a six-point advantage, Hales will fall back into the defensive mindset. And they're going to pick him up full court again, keep that pressure on, try to generate some offense out of some turnovers. And there's a foul on Wilson. I mean, you put Wilson up on that full court press, and then you got Chapital looming back there. you got some people who can really create havoc in passing lanes. Nate Minoy's coming out right now. He's going to take a rest, maybe for the remainder of this third quarter, because Gary London knows, hey, that trophy's going to be won in the fourth quarter, it looks like, one way or the other, by one team or the other. Look at those hands. Robinson did not let Kroll get up. I'll take that. <laughs> Robinson's just so quick out there, and he's just got a stone-cold look on his face. Not giving away his, his hand at all. Chapital spins. And here he goes again, and he will draw the whistle and the foul. He was going to go in there and either get the basket or the foul, one of the two. He just sacrificed his body. There you see Nate Minoy, and of course Nate is headed to Purdue, as we said, along with uh, another Chicago area recruit. 
Marcus Green from Franklin Park Layden. They're hoping to turn that Purdue program around with Matt Painter as the head coach. And Nate says, I love Mr. Painter. He likes to run. <laughs> and that's what Matt likes to do. Robinson, one of two as Brooks clears. Bad pass. Pro finally gets it back, though. McCrimmon almost got the steal. Bawinkle working against Chapital. He gets it blocked, but he'll go to the free throw line. And Chapital's like, oh, come on. Yeah, there's a lot of body contact there on that shot. It'll be a two-shot foul attempt from the line. But if he makes both, Matt, we're back to that five-point deficit we had for Winnebago with the break. So they're, they're hanging. They're just not making that one little extra run. Well, they're just not getting it done on the defensive yep. end. They got to get some stops defensively. Offensively, they've still been able to get some points, get their shots. Bowenkel's had a big quarter, but they just got to get some stops on the defensive end. It's back to five. Bowenkel has had quite the tournament, wouldn't you say, man? Oh, he's just been phenomenal. Really impressed. A lot of the people that either didn't see him in it last year or haven't seen uh, what he's capable of. And, you know, he's really improved, I think, since last year, even in, in a lot of areas. I think he, over the summer he plays a lot of AAU ball and he plays with a lot of these guys that you see on the floor as well from Hales and some of the other Chicago area product. Oh, Mike Robinson made a mistake. One of the few we've seen and that's in the a call, last couple that's days. That's a call that, you, honestly, you don't see called very often where a guy catches the ball and hops with both feet. Yeah. You can't do that. You got to catch and establish one pivot foot and you can't hop with the ball. There's so many guys that do that and so often it's not called by the officials. Good call in that situation. Here's a chance for Bego to get back under five. They've been fighting this deficit all night. Ranky kicks it out. Bob Winkle couldn't get it. Ball is tipped. There's Brooks. They're back to within three. Great action on the offensive board by Brooks there. Randall. No, Brooks rebound. Muscles it out of there. Could it be a one-point game nearing the end of the third quarter or oh, better tie yet tied? They're going to hold for the final shot as Franciscan looks for the steal like they always do. That's the man they want with the basketball right now. Ten seconds, here we go. Devin. It's your show. I think Chapman's up to the challenge as well. There yes, you go. he is. And he does not save it, but Chapman at 6'7 has such long arms yeah. and just really knows where to be in the right place at all the time on defense. Now they probably won't get the shot they originally wanted. They're going to still try to free up Bowwinkle, but let's see. Grissett is going to have to do it. Hangs, not there. Rebound belongs to Hales Franciscan, and it's a three point ball game. Heading into the final eight minutes of regulation. Will it be Hales, Franciscan, or Winnebago? Three-point ball game with eight minutes to go in regulation. Hales with the three-point lead over Winnebago. And we are with uh, several of the 2003 Hales, Franciscan state champs. Andre Johnson is here in the yellow jacket. What do you remember about 03? Was it this hectic? Yeah, it was about the same. I just remember just the best time of the season. Blake Kraft is here too. You were with Coach London for years. What was he telling these guys in the huddle with eight minutes to go? Just come out with some intensity and play some great D and the baskets will fall for you. What do you think, Nate? Nate Hood? That's the exact same thing he would say to us too. He said the same thing. Uh, you guys are here supporting your guys. Let's see those rings. You guys all got your rings on. They want to add another ring to the finger for Coach London, guys. Back to you. Robinson with the steal and the finish. And now we've got some quick action back to back here as Kroll goes up, gets it blocked. There's they came Chapel out with again. that intensity, didn't they? Absolutely, you gotta start it from the defensive end. We've already seen one basket out for turnover, there's two. Jerome Randall, whatever momentum Winnebago had garnered has disappeared in about 30 seconds. And now they've gotta right themselves. And that would mean seeing if Mr. Bowwinkle wants the basketball. Points off of turnovers just in the second half alone are 12 to 2 in favor of Hales. There's another turnover almost. Oh, this is going to be trouble. Brooks gives it up. This Constant is three pressure. straight turnovers. Robinson surveys. 
turned it over. Yeah, never could get control of the ball, got his hand on top of it. I think he wanted to go to Manoy in the right wing, and then somebody closed the passing lane, so he tried to change his mind. And the first minute of the fourth quarter, the all-important fourth quarter belongs to Hales. They're up by seven. We're back after these local messages. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Other use of this program without the express written consent of the Illinois High School Association and cost broadcast sales is strictly prohibited. Well, you're down by three, starting the fourth quarter. You get three turnovers. That is what happened to Winnebago with that quickness of the Hales Franciscan defense. And now they can ill afford another. In the backcourt is Wes Renke coming up against Randall. And Bawinkle's trying to figure out Chapital. He gets some space, comes up short. Ball is fought for, and Mr. Robinson's about to find his neighborhood again. No, gets it taken away, but controls somehow as Randall comes. Looks across. In and out. No. Right. Wilson couldn't get it. That's almost a technical. It should be. I, you know, the officials have not called that. That's the, about the third time that a player's been hanging on the rim. You've got to call it. If there's nobody underneath him, that's the reason why that call is there. Well, Wilson wanted to jam, couldn't get it, as Bawinkle goes up, hits it. Hanging tough, five Winnebago. points again is the deficit. Winnebago needs a strong dose of Devin Bawinkle here in the fourth quarter, but what a, what a game by Mike Robinson at this point. He's got 28. His season high was 33 in a game earlier this year. He has been the difference here tonight. He has just controlled things with threes, with penetration, with passing off like that. It'll go, and Manoy is at the free throw line with a chance for three. Nate Manoy is so hard to stop. When he has the ball in his hands, he's going to the basket. If you try to stop him, you're going to get a foul, and more than likely, he's going to be strong enough to get it up off the glass and in. And of course, with those kind of arms, he's more or less a tattoo billboard. He's got all kinds of things written on those arms. He rents out space there. <laughs> Bob Winkle tries for some separation to get nothing but air. And Manoy says, oh, I'll just wait. Great defense again by Chapital. Randall goes up. Bob Winkle contest him, and we're coming the other way. 5.33. Kroll better watch out. Can he make that? He can. I tell you, Kroll has been the guy that seems to have the Jets to keep up with Hales. He's been down the floor a few times and, and gotten freed up just for some lay-ins. You know, he's got 15 points in the ball game now as well. Most of them came early. He'd like to add some more late. Five-point lead again as Robinson. Look at that body control. Michael Robinson, I don't know what college he wants to go to, but I can think that the list will be fairly long. I mean, he may be only 5'10", right? But that's that's a tall 5'10". It doesn't handle the ball extremely well, but he does shoot the ball very well. Good he does guard. take it to the basket hard, and he's got this little mid-range game as we're going to see here, dropping down two of his game-high 29 points. He's a phenomenal defender. I mean, certainly he's got some ability there. I just would like to see a better ball handler out of him to really complete the package. Oh. Kroll got away with that one, and then <laughs> Robinson knocked it away from behind. There's those quick hands by Mike Robinson. I really like his attitude on the floor, too. He's just a great competitor. This IHSA basketball broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Hales Franciscan, less than five minutes away from their second state championship in two years. Winnebago trying to find some magic. Of course, there's more magic coming next week with the boys class double-A state finals starting Friday right here on the IHSA TV network. Lots of upsets in the sectional finals last night. Absolutely. Man. Westinghouse went down. St. Joe, the, the number one team in the state, went down. And several of the ranked teams in the top 16 in the state have gone down out of this uh, state final series. Be interested to see who makes it down next weekend. Could be wide open with the way things are going. Bawinkle inbounds to Gassetta. He's surrounded, and the ball goes off of the foot of Darius Melcher. He just can't put the ball on the floor around, the, around two defenders, let alone one. 
I mean, they defend great high and low. I mean, if you put the ball down, as Matt just said, there's a hand down there. If you go upstairs with it, they've got the leaping ability to deflect shots, misdirect shots. Brennan Kroll came here with a heart full of hope. So did this guy, Bowwinkle. It's rejected inside by Wilson and not saved by Chapital, who goes up to about <laughs> row 12. Chapital saying, I was calling timeout. <laughs> uh, that's another rule I wanted to get I rid of. I do not like that rule at all. Yeah, that was certainly a message by Wilson inside, making sure that Bowwinkle knows he needs to stay on the perimeter, settle for those jump shots. Well, Kroll saw Wilson jump out of the left. Got a five-second call coming here. Kick it out. Bowwinkle with those hands manages to get the pass. They just keep forcing you out further and further. So you got to go inside, and Nelson didn't like it. Jumper, no. Rebound, fought for, and Snyder is surrounded. Waits for help. Goes all the way out front. And I don't know how Kroll got it. He didn't, as it turned out. Robinson did. Look out, Mr. Chapinel. What an exciting player Chapinel is. He's so effective in the open court. He just waits his turn out without, with all these stars on the floor. And his turn, more often than not, comes in transition. And now it's either ball winkle time or not. And he knows it as he goes up and doesn't get it. Tip not there. Rebound fought for. And Grissetta will go to the free throw line. And you know, you can't put this on the shoulders of Bowwinkle. There's just so much talent on Hales Franciscan that they, they're just everywhere. Kroll just couldn't get to this Aaron pass, and there's Mike Robinson with the quick hands again. Hello. Chapel down there. Nice little poster shot there once again by Mr. Chapel. <laughs> just in case there was any dust left on the net. I'll tell you, this front line for Hales is very impressive. They would match up well with a lot of double-A teams. You can see in their schedule they played a lot of double-A schools. And their front line's just very, very big for a Class A school. Look at Wilson out on little Nelson there. Nelson's got to feel like, whoa, what are these skyscrapers growing here for? Nelson will go over the top and hit him. <laughs> Greg Nelson went over Wilson somehow. Still a six-point game. It just doesn't seem like it's that close. Well, because Hales Franciscan has so much going for them, you just kind of figure they're going to figure it out. If it gets close, they're going to pull away, but it's basketball, and you don't know. Robinson up. Who he missed it. Rebound Grissetta had it. Oh, Robinson right back. Up. Oh, did he walk? Yes, he did. Underneath, Mr. Robinson. I thought that ball was going to fall, but it wouldn't have counted anyway, and so it could be a four-point game or... If you're thinking three, do the math. And that's what Winnebago need was some type of stop defensively, whether they stop the offense for Hales on their own or Hales in that situation turn the ball over. Ranky brings it up with Bowwinkle waiting for the pass. Brooks is up top at top of the key there, but I don't think they're going to be getting look at this pressure. And Kroll is forced out of bounds by Chapital. I believe that's a seventh team foul against Hales. It should be a one bonus opportunity. So we need Kroll to connect on these. Well, plus it's a really good situation for Bego because they can rest a little bit here. They can stop the clock and they can get the two points to cut it back to four all at once. Kroll, 80 percent. Key foul there for Hales as well. That's Chapel's fourth. He's been so effective in this ball game, especially defensively against Ballwinkle. Oh, he missed the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, that's not going to help Bega. Yeah, you certainly got to take advantage of those opportunities when you get them. Bringing it up is Melcher. Randall getting a little rest right now. Melcher, no. Oh, but Manoy is going to muscle home another two and go to the free throw line. Yeah, he just he gets position because he roots around in there down low. He doesn't get off the ground very high, but then as he goes up, you see he just gets the defender and those arms just bounce off of him. Yeah. You try to go and block his shot or just put your hands up in the air, they'll bounce right off of his arms going up to the basket. Looks like a PT cruiser, like, you know, trying to, trying to make a dent in a Hummer. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work. And again, Menor responds with a big three-pointer just as Winnebago tried to close the gap. And as we approach two minutes, you can't have a turnover, and that's exactly what they come up with as Manoy and Hales Franciscan get a little closer 
to another state championship. Last year with Chicago Leo because Hales couldn't be here. Look at Minoy. No, he doesn't get the jam. But <laughs> that would have been some kind of finish whoa. right there. That would have been. And he's back to the free throw line. He, he wanted that jam, too. What an aggressive move that was. Had Snyder behind him. Does the little spin move and goes up strong. He really wanted this dunk. <laughs> that rim shaking right now out of fear, not just uh, in reaction to the Manoy visit. And there you see Devin Bowwinkle, who this guy has spent more hours in a gym. I'm sure Nate Manoy has too. Winnebago had five turnovers in the semifinal game earlier today. They have 16 in this ball game. Just shows you the the price that you have to pay to take care of the basketball. One of the tattoos on the noise arm says, work now, play later. Ranky, got to have it. It is a charge. It is a charge. I wonder if they gave him the basket. Might have been. Uh, yeah. They blew no, off they the basket. No basket, and time's running out for Winnebago, whose fans react accordingly after they get the basket they thought they had taken away and there's only been two other schools Matt who have lost back-to-back -back championship games so it's a rarity obviously it's a it's a sign that you're a darn good team to get there but uh, a rarity nonetheless to drop two in a row no but not too many teams can say they've been to two in a row even though they might have lost both of them That's quite an offensive set that we're seeing by Hales right now. This first time we've really seen them run that throughout the tournament is just setting up with Minoy at the high post, just feeding it to him and let him go straight to the basket, big and strong inside, and send him to the free throw line. Well, most points scored in a championship game belongs to Providence St. Mel back in 85 when they lit it up for 95. Warsaw hit 92 back in 97. Trenton Westland. 83 and 90. T-Town 82 and 86. And Pickneyville 77 and 2001. And right now, Hales Francisco with 75. And they're closing in. There's one more turnover to add to the total. Well, I, I, I really thought, and, and you made it clear a couple of minutes ago, they just seem to be in control. Hales Francisco, even, even though the point got down to four, maybe three, three at one point, they seem to be in control, and now they'll clear the benches. Well, again, Winnebago falls short this year, but they certainly gave it a great run, and they ran into a tremendous team in Hales Franciscan, a team that certainly was on a mission this year. We talked about them not being eligible to participate in the state finals series last year, uh, but certainly guys like Nate Minoy and Jerome Randall. Mike Robinson that were here three, year, three years ago in the 2003 championship put this team on their back and willed them to win. All kinds of substitutions in. But we still have Mr. Randall out front playing keep away with his teammate Robinson right down there, sir. They're starting to check in with us again. Also with the ball game is Courtney Coleman for Hales Franciscan. Wilson still in there. As is Melcher. Well, it's going to be Chicago, Chicago, Chicago the last three years in a row. And as I stated when we started, Matt, it's played in Peoria, but in Class A, it still runs through Chicago at least the last three years as Hales. And that hasn't always been the case. No, it you hasn't. We've seen some great teams from Chicago come down here that haven't gotten the job done. There's been some phenomenal downstate teams. But this last three year run that they've had have tremendous teams out of that Catholic League. You got Hales two out of three years in Chicago Leo last year. Havana back in 78 and 79, Spring Valley Hall in 97 and 98. They'll join Winnebago as back to back championship heartbreakers. There you see Nate Manoy. I tell you what, his coach gave him. When you give Nate a hug, it's a big hug, it's a huge hug. It's more like a group hug, That's actually. A true, true bear hug right there. <laughs> and, uh, Gary London gave him that. And of course, all of Chicago will have 
the headlines booming tomorrow. I don't know about you, Matt, but if uh, if I were them and I had a newspaper headline that said state champs and I was part of it, that would be framed and never leave me no matter where I went. Even if the wife made me put it in the garage, <laughs> I'd still keep it. There you see Jerome Randall, who's going to win a lot of basketball games in his playing career wherever he goes. He's still got another year left here at Hales Franciscan, of he's, course. He's losing some firepower, though. Yeah, that's this true. This Hales team loses a lot of seniors. This Winnebago team had a couple of good underclassmen, and Bob Winkle as well as Reinke. I wouldn't be surprised to see them back down here once again next year. Laval in the ball game, wearing number 10. Matthew Humphreys, number 34 for Hales Franciscan. 55 is, well, you're going to have to tell me because he's not on the roster. He's going to make gonna a basket, though, so you're going to have to know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do it, didn't they? They must have changed a, a number on us, but nonetheless, this is the way it's going to end. 78-62, the state champions and well-deserved Hales Franciscan. And we, we wondered if Winnebago could A, score inside. They didn't do that enough. And could they stop them inside? And they didn't do that enough. Well, it really came down they couldn't stop the penetration. Yeah. You know, Mike Robinson just went wild in this ball game, had 30 points for the game, and really did whatever he wanted to do. And that set the tone for Hales and then also defensively for Winnebago. And of course, uh, Matt Minoy, when he had to be inside, he seemed to have a couple of huge three point baskets every time Winnebago was making a run. The man headed for Purdue. Right there, you see him with the towel over his head. Said, nope, not to be denied. Clearly, Minoy is the leader of this team. He's just the, the strength, the force behind them. Had 18 points in this ball game. Has always been the leader the last few years, and, and we saw it again tonight. And Nate's grown up over the past year, of course. He had an incident where he got into it with a fan and got suspended for a couple of games, and his team lost a game. He said he learned from that. Let's go to Lee Hall. Lee, some happy folks. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, read all about it. Hales Franciscan State Champs. You can see it right there. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine how sweet it feels. Well, it, it really feels sweet. It, uh, more than anything, it, I feel blessed. I want to just uh, thank God for, for blessing Hales Franciscan High School and, and blessing me uh, and my family. I want to send a shout out to my mom and my dad. And uh, I love you guys and thank you for everything. And uh, but yeah, it, it definitely feels it feels sweet the second time around. And uh, I tell you what, these guys were so focused all year long. I couldn't think of a better way for these seniors. Uh, Nate Minoy, Mike Robinson. You know, we got about seven seniors. All of them: Jeff Wilson, uh, Evan McCrimmon, Darius Melcher, uh, Shannon Yerger. For all of them to go out the, uh, the way they went out. Uh, it was a great job. Austin Chapel is another senior. And uh, again, these guys have been focused on it all year long. Coach, congratulations. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Mike Robinson is our country insurance player of the game. Just 30 points. Uh, oh, yeah, it felt real good to score 30. The game before, they really did a great job on me by having two people follow me everywhere I go. But this time, they left me one on one. I'm hard to stick one on one. Also, what inspired me was uh, Will Bynum play today. He had 35 against North Carolina, and he's my height. And everybody say I'm too little to play D1 basketball. I just tried to prove it wrong in this game. Nate Minoy struggled with stomach flu all day. He sat out a lot tonight, and you really stepped it up with his, him being on the bench. Yeah. I, as usual, when Nate Minoy is sick against Brother Rice, I scored 30 when he was sick. Every time Nate Minoy is out or down, I try to step up. Either me or Jerome step up. So this is what I did today was step up today. Not being able to come here last year has to be really sweet to win here. Yeah, it feels real good. It's undescribable. It feels real good to be back down here just to be able to, to compete. That's, felt, that's the greatest feeling ever. All right, Mike Robinson, our country insurance player of the game. Jim, back to you. That is confidence and truth all in one statement. Nobody can guard me one on one. It reminds, reminds me a lot of Will Bynum, and that's a, a great analogy by him. And I'm not sure going to doubt his ability to play Division One basketball. I'll guarantee you that. Well, he certainly used tonight's floor here in Peoria, his D1 resume, didn't he? 
He certainly did. Reminds me a lot of another guy when I was playing about the same size that used the state championship series as a springboard to bigger and better things in, in uh, Division One basketball as Tony Weisinger. And about the same size of 5'10", played at Peoria Central, had a phenomenal state state tournament run, and uh, ended up at Illinois. Well, we've got some trophies to hand out and some memories to make, and here's Mr. Paul Herzog, our PA announcer. Paul? Principal, Marianne Niss-Smith. Athletic director and assistant coach, Ron Ferguson. Vice Principal, Matt Zickert. Head Coach, Joe Murphy. Assistant Coach, Tom Sipes. Assistant Coach, Michael Gearhart. Manager, Dustin Faulkner. And now the Indians. Number three, Ling Hao Dong. Number 10, Craig Nelson. 11, Brennan Kroll. 12, Adam Meacham. 13, Wes Reinke. 14, Brandon Droy. 15, Ryan Sandy. 21, Devin Ballwinkle. 23, Chase Jensen. 41, Caleb Snyder. 42, Sean Grishetta. 50, Dale Falconer. 51, Jacob Spencer. 53, Robert Brooks. And 55, Jacob Bronkema. The Indians of Winnebago, second place, 2005, Class A. Presenting the awards and medallions will be Catherine Flanagan, assisted by Ron Connor. For the Class A champions, Spartans of Hales Franciscan, the principal, Dr. John Young. Athletic Director, James Thornton. Head Coach, Gary London. Assistant Coach, Daryl Sander. Dr. John Young as principal. Assistant coach, Charles Smith. Assistant coach, Alonzo Crowder. Three, Jerome Randall. 40, Courtney Coleman. 10, Rashad Vavail. Twelve, Darius Melcher. Fourteen, Austin Chapito. Fifteen, Shannon Yerger. 
55 Ryan Bass. Twenty one Jeff Wilson. Twenty two Jonathan Reddick. Twenty three Michael Robinson. Twenty five Evan McCrimmon. 5, Andre Debonet. 33, Nate Minoy. 34, Matthew Humphrey. And the manager, Jonathan Jackson. The Spartans, Class A, 2005 state champion. And now will Coach Murphy and the captains of Winnebago step forth to receive their second place trophy. And now will Coach London and the captains of Hales Franciscan step forward to receive the first place trophy, 2005 Class A champions. They came and they conquered, leaving with what they came for, the first place trophy, Hales Franciscan. Talent all across the board and you see the celebration. Our congratulations to both Hales Franciscan and Winnebago. We're going away, we're gonna have a network break followed by a local break. Back at the Peoria Civic Center, Carver Arena, people milling around on the floor with their favorite players, usually their sons and friends. When we reflect on this tournament, we're going to, first of all, concentrate on how much good junior talent we saw. Well, not only junior talent, but we saw some younger than that. I yeah. mean, Lucas <laughs> O'Rear was exceptional for Nashville, a sophomore. As you said, a lot of good juniors, uh, and a lot of those guys were on the first team All-State team. So. A lot of great talent in the area, uh, and you're going to see that in double-A as well. But going into this tournament, know what we saw the last few years with Hales two years ago and then what we saw at Winnebago last year. Those were the two teams I thought would be in the final game here, and it was a great final matchup. Two best teams I think we had in the tournament. And, of course, you got storylines like Breeze Central. They make it to three straight Elite Eights but get turned away every time by either eventual champions or, in this case, Winnebago, who wanted a championship. And then you've got Winnebago, uh, a, a great story, a, a, a remade team. They've still got uh, Devin Bawinkle, but a completely remade team, but they make it all the way to the final game of the season again. And, and how many times throughout this state tournament series that we saw down here just in Peoria, Teams fall behind by double digits, but came storming back, just didn't give up. And, you know, teams coming down here for a reason. They want to give their heart, give their all, leave it on the floor and not take anything home. Well, speaking of Winnebago, Joe Murphy standing by with our Lee Hall. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. Uh, Coach, uh, you get to the second play or the championship game two years in a row, and that's a heck of an effort, but just, uh, just not enough there tonight. Yeah, we were a little short. We made some mistakes. You know, when you play a Hales team, they're so outstanding that you can't make certain mistakes. And uh, every time we got close, it seemed that we'd make a mistake or fall apart a little bit or, or miss a shot. So you can't do those when you play an outstanding team like them. It's almost like you're playing a game in fast forward against them, isn't it? It sure is. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, as far as the second place, I think if I can do that for the next 20 years, uh, it'd be fine with me, okay? Uh, sometime I want to get the first place one. But... Uh, it's just great to be in the championship game. Well, and, and what an effort by your kids all season long to, to get back here two years in a row. That, that doesn't happen every day. No, it doesn't. And we lost a lot of people from last year's team, but uh, the group of kids we got put a lot of time in the summer, worked real hard in their, and their skills. And, uh, you know, and when you have a Devin Ballwick who can lead you down, uh, that helps a great deal too. Coach, congratulations. 
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Nate Minoy is here and uh, second time sweeter? Of course it is. It's the second trip. Always got to be better than the first. <laughs> Always? Always. And I imagine it had to be even more sweet since you couldn't come here last year, right? Of course it is. Um, when you feel like something was taken from you and then you finally get a chance to take that thing back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's always sweet at taking something. <laughs> you had to take a rest in this game. Uh, you've been fighting it all day, haven't you? How you feeling? Um, I'm still a little bit under the weather, man, but um, my teammates picked me up today, and ain't nothing sweeter than winning another state championship. Tell me about Michael Robinson's play tonight. He, he said you were sick earlier in the game this year, and he scored 30. You were sick today, he scored 30 tonight. Um, there's a little bit of everything to Mike. Um, Mike got some good news today from some college coaches, and Mike came out and played his butt off today. I mean, that's that's what we expected. Any doubt he can play D1? Oh, of course he's going to play D1. He's going to Purdue. So. Heard it here first. All right. Back to you, Jim. Well, if that's true, Matt Peter obviously uh, has another uh, talent on his hands. And here's some of the highlights, of course, that we saw. Look at this play. Got it out to Chapital, of course, and every time Winnebago looked like they were going to close that gap, the hammer came down. Chapital's kind of the fourth guy maybe in the rotation that you would expect to do the damage for Hales, but he was very effective for them and brought that other element to their game both at both ends of the floor offensively and defensively. Okay. Winnebago kept things alive for as long as they could from the outside, but they fall tonight in the championship game. All hail to Hales Francis and 78, 62 Seneca over Liberty for the third place game. For Matt Taphorn, for Roger Lowe, for Lee Hall, and for Kurt Pegler, I'm Jamal Breck. Good night, everybody, from the IHSA Television Network.